Hello, my name is Jenna Lay. I'm an associate professor and the director of graduate studies in the English department at Lehigh University, uh, where I'm also the project director on an NEH Next Generation Humanities PhD planning grant. And I'm here to speak with you today about mentoring. I'll begin with the first question. To what extent should faculty advisors address challenges that humanities graduate students currently face, particularly with regard to non-professorial career prospects and adapting their work to non-academic publics? This is such an important question and one that comes up frequently in conversations with my faculty colleagues. Despite all of the privilege that accrues to faculty, especially with tenure, there's a great deal of anxiety about what we don't know. We're trained to be experts in our fields, and the idea of speaking to something outside of one's area of expertise can be quite intimidating and potentially threatening to the values we hold dear. The rigor and depth of knowledge that enable one to complete the PhD and the specialization necessary to write and publish an academic monograph and earn tenure at institutions that train PhD students. In other words, the very things that academics train themselves to do make it difficult to see the many other pathways that are available, both their students and themselves. And yet, faculty are also trained to learn things for a living. We must keep up with current scholarship, engage with and understand new methodologies, and constantly exercise our analytical capacities in service of advancing knowledge in our fields. So if we're able to do those things, to learn about newly discovered novels, for example, or delve into the digital humanities in order to explore a pressing question, we should also be able to learn more about how our students might build on the work that they've done in graduate school in a range of different fields. These issues are especially pressing, as Jose suggests, when we consider the importance of the humanities to non-academic publics. We need smart, well-trained people who value critical engagement, depth of inquiry, and cultural competency in every possible career path in government and nonprofits, in museums and galleries and journalism and publishing, consulting and business, communications and marketing. I could go on and on here. We need a world in which PhDs in the humanities are fully immersed in the sometimes very mundane, but nonetheless radical work of shaping our cultural and political conversations. And I strongly believe that faculty must be engaged in this effort initiating regular conversations with students about their values, commitments, and capacities. Graduate school should never foreclose possibilities. It should always expand them. And faculty are responsible for creating a space in which students are able to imagine futures for themselves that push us beyond our often self-imposed boundaries. I would propose, in other words, that faculty must work to create a space that enables conversations, holistic mentoring, and a recognition of the value in multiple career pathways. What, then, is the responsibility of graduate students? To speak to the second question, are they responsible for seeking additional mentors and developing diverse skill sets, experiences, and opportunities that go beyond traditional conceptions of doctoral work? To a certain extent, absolutely yes. As Jose suggests, graduate students do have primary responsibility for seeking the tools that will enable them to reach their goals. And that is a shared responsibility that depends upon cultural change facilitated by faculty advisors. What then might this changed culture look like? I see it as a networked space in which graduate students are made aware of the resources available to them and the mechanisms for pursuing those resources before they even set foot on campus. This involves work on the part of faculty and institutions, careful placement tracking, for example, which enables the establishment of a graduate advisory and council and mentoring network for both students and faculty. It also requires careful facilitation. Faculty must listen as graduate students explain their interests and aspirations and help them identify mentors outside of academe and opportunities to develop diverse experiences while in graduate school. Ultimately, this also requires that faculty and administration engage in careful consideration of funding opportunities, integrated curricular and co-curricular activities, and consideration of how the dissertation might reflect both the shared academic rigor we expect and the values and aspirations of individual students. We must provide students with options and then give them the space to choose and to pursue ideas that didn't occur to us. 
we must also feel secure enough in our own abilities to support our students to recognize that they will need other forms of support and a wide network of individuals, former PhDs, career advisors, friends, family, faculty in other departments, and at other institutions to help them succeed in whatever paths they wish to pursue. Mentorship is a shared project in which both faculty and graduate students have a vested internship interest, and it is a project that I believe can shift academic culture and expand our understanding of how the humanities can shape the world. Thank you.